Okay, welcome everyone. I'm, I'm just started recording the meeting. This is the uh, meeting of the 95 Lawrence Road Task Force on uh, February 24th, 2021. Uh, we have our full complement here and we really wanna um, welcome Maria uh, here with us today and also Laura who's disappeared. <laughs> Thank you. And um, let's see if we can get her back. Um, but really, the purpose of today is really to try to bring this home and uh, be ready to bring a completed RFP to um, the select board as soon as possible, which ideally would be to get on the March 9th agenda. Um, in order to do that, we have a few things to, to finish up. Um, and I listed some of them. Uh, I listed, uh, we have RFP outstanding issues on the agenda. There are um, a few in addition to what was listed. Uh, really hoping we see Laura again. Um, Gary and I had a phone check-in with Laura yesterday um, to prepare for today. And, and she's been working, she and Katie are working very hard on putting everything together. I'm not, I don't think we have the RFP with the wastewater uh, included today, but Laura just inserted the entire wording that we got from Bowler onsite into the RFP for the, for the wastewater section. And she's having uh, their, attorney look at both the ground lease and the LDA that we got from uh, back from town council. Um, uh, sometimes town council puts in sort of too many qualifiers to begin with. It's really a draft document that gets worked out once a developer is selected. So as with the RFP, um, Laura and the attorneys at MHP are making sure there's no language in there that really compromises the, the project to be the, the, the best it can be for, for um, a developer to respond to. So um, that is what she's working on and she knows what our timeline is, what, what our hopeful timeline is. Um, so that's that. Does anybody have any questions about the wastewater part? Okay. Um, the next thing on the agenda was also something that Laura was checking on, but I did too, and I contacted Maria about this. Um, best practice is to, and we've talked about it at the Housing Trust too, best practice is to have a procurement officer um, associated with the RFP. And um, we have um, made uh, general contact with the county procurement officer who said she would be willing to help if we find out what we need. Um, but Maria, I don't know if you had thoughts if you would like us to pursue that angle or if we have anybody in our pocket. <laughs> well, we don't have anybody in our pocket that probably meet your timeline. So if the, if the county procurement officer was willing to do it, I don't see any, I don't see any issues with that as long as um, all of you are engaged in the review process for what comes in in the way that you expected. Um, yeah. We have identified um, someone to be the admis uh, assistant town administrator, but she's, she's not going to be on board probably in the timeline that you're looking for. Ah, is that something you can share with us? Or? Um, it, yeah, her, her name's uh, Rebecca Slick. Um, she is a rising star in local government coming from Berkshire County. Oh. So she, okay. she does have uh, background in planning and in purchasing, um, but you know, we just went through the sort of opportunity for the board to um, chime in on it last night. And you know, so she's, um, she's probably just you know, 
working on giving her notice okay. now, um, you know, trying to figure out which direction she's going because she's, you know, definitely not going to be here in the next couple of weeks or whatever the timeline is that you're looking for. Okay. Um, but, yes. The common, yeah, the, the charter designates the town administrator as the chief procurement officer and the town administrator has wide latitude to delegate that authority. So there is a framework for delegating that authority on this project to the county purchasing officer if that turns out to be the good solution. I think it's probably the most reasonable and logistically the best solution, Harry, if they're mm -hmm. if they're willing to do it. Yeah, well, mine's expired, so it's not me. Yeah, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm supposed to be three weeks into the third class, and uh, you know, can't seem to find the time to get going with with that right now. So, um, you know, that that's a supposedly a nine week process, and I'm behind on it at, as it is, just uh, being a little busy right now. Mm -hmm. All right. Come I ask you a question. If sure. uh, let's say the select board approves it on March 9th, yep. uh, then we have to put it into the central registry. Yep. And two questions. How long do you think before it gets actually posted? And is that the official date? Well, the, the, uh, you, 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 the RFP specifies a, a response date. Right. And you have to schedule that far enough in advance so you can post publish and, and publish in the central register. The central register is pretty quick. I, I think that uh, probably within a week, you can get it in the central register, I think. It's been mm -hmm. a while since I did one, but it's it's pretty quick. Well, yeah, uh, I don't recall whether now that you have to do a central register posting, you still have to do a newspaper uh, publishing as well. But That's if you do, you know, if you got to publish it twice in the newspaper, that's probably uh, three to four weeks you need between getting the ad in, getting it published, and then you got to build in some time for people to actually, uh, uh, you know, put together a meaningful response. We have, we'll, we'll cover that in a little more detail, especially when Laura comes back. Uh, Kathleen has her hand up. Um, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I've heard uh, very, very good things about the uh, procurement officer at the uh, Barnstable County Commissioner's Office. Um, so I think we'd be in very competent and um, good, reliable hands um, uh, to go that way. Um, I, I, Sheila Lyons assures me, she's the new county commissioner here from Wellfleet, that um, this person's just... Um, really you know spot on in all that she does so yeah she's um unfortunately she's just working part-time at the moment um yeah but she was responsive and and in talking with laura yesterday she said we what we should ask her to do is she she would need to review the rfp for sure and make sure it was compliant with the law and review our process for releasing the rfp and um and there could be a cost associated with it. Um, so, um, Maria, do you want, shall I pursue those things with her or would you like to do that? Uh, if you have the time and ability to do it, it, it would happen faster if you did. Okay, um, and if there is a cost involved, is that something the town could- Sure, we can find somewhere for that to come from. Okay. That's, All right. that's, that's reasonable for them to expect to be paid for that. Okay. All right. Um, that's great. Wonderful. So I will, I will get back in touch with her and find out. As she, you know, uh, her, her timeline sounded like it might be tricky too, but I'll get right back to her. I'm just going to check my email, see if there's anything from Laura. So I'll just pursue it while you're doing that. So Harry, assuming it, it gets approved on the 9th at the select board meeting, um, then uh, if we get in the registry and do the advertising within two weeks, let's say by the end of March, then what's a realistic um, due date? There we 
think well, of it. Well, put yourself in the shoes of a developer who's going to do a, what was it, 45 or 47 unit housing project. You, you've got some due diligence to to uh, to do to determine whether it's a feasible project that you're interested in doing. Mm -hmm. you know, you, I think it's unreasonable to expect a developer to see that on a Thursday and by Monday pop something in the mail that says I'll do it on this basis. Um, no, you know, it's a big it's a big project. That, right, you know, no one is suggesting expect. that. So that's a yeah. Good. You may expect, and maybe Laura's got a better handle on this, but you may expect a, a potential. Um, a responding developer to want you know three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, six weeks to figure out what they are willing to propose. I don't know. Yeah, I I, I think that's about right. I mean the um, the shorter time you give them, the less work they're going to put into it, or they may just pass because mm -hmm. it's not enough time for them to do their homework on it. So right. No one's advocating any particular date. I'm just trying to determine what date we should put us as the end date. I think we're getting to that. Okay. Okay. I just, hi, Laura. Welcome back. <laughs> I don't know what happened. <laughs> Your computer is probably as tired as you are <laughs> with all the work it's too doing. Many, too many Zooms. Um, I'll just let you know that so far we just mentioned that you have incorporated the whole wastewater language from Bowler onsite into the RFP, right? Yes. Um, did you, Elaine, did you get everything? No. Was that sent today? Mm, I don't know. I thought it was sent last night, but I haven't had time to check. Okay. I didn't get it, so I assumed that you might not have. I apologize. I thought it was going to go out by yesterday. Okay. Um, I, I, I was looking for stuff, but I didn't see anything, but I, I didn't check my... Um, All right. I yeah. haven't heard back. I haven't heard back from Katie. They are still in a uh, training. So, okay. Um, um, anyway, yes, I took the whole um, piece that Bowler had suggested and put it in under utilities, wastewater, and then just had the whole background and explanation in there. Um, I didn't feel like I needed to or had the expertise to summarize their summary. So mm -hmm. I left it as is. Okay. And then we, we, um, we were just talking about the procurement officer issue and, and every, everybody's pretty, uh, everybody's positive about seeing if the county procurement officer will, will do what we talked about yesterday. Okay. Um, and, um, so, and so along with that, um, we started talking about the timeline and the dates. And um, so uh, maybe we can continue with that and pin it down a little bit more. Um, so ideally, if we use the, the calendar that the select board approved on March 9th, if it gets delayed by two weeks, we can adjust what we come up with right now. But if we have an approval on March 9th, um, the next step is to send it, the announcement to the central register, right? Mm -hmm. And we have to advertise twice in the newspaper and, and nothing can be put out or appear until it's posted in the central register. So, I mean, we could try to have the first newspaper announcement the same day as the register came out, but I guess we'd wanna be careful, right? Not well, you know when it's going to, they'll tell you the published date. It's always a Wednesday. And when you put the submission in, it tells you which publication date it's going to be. Um, and um, Maria, the town ideally should send that to the central register. So um, can we work with you to do that? I'm sure you can. We'll, we'll figure mm -hmm. it out. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a simple form. Mm -hmm. Online. Okay. When um, East Ham and some others, you know, put their solicitations out, how much time did they allow for the proposals to come back? So the, if you're asking me, the, um, the minimum time you can give is 30 days. Um, we 
uh, that's in the law. Um, I usually suggest between 60 and 90. It takes a long time. They have to put, come up with, um, you know, conceptual plans, elevations, typical units. This it, and it costs. I was told for the, the latest one that I did that it, it costs the proposers somewhere between 40 and 50 thousand um, dollars to put the proposal together. So you try and give them enough time to put something together that, you know. Uh, work so they need architects and whatever on board um, so <clears throat> I go between 60 you know some folks go out to 90 some go 60 and some go 75 in between so yeah, no, that, that makes that makes a lot of sense you want you want the best proposal you can get exactly so would a, a 90 day one how do people feel about that if we give the maximum is there some other timeline trigger that is affected yes. by this? Yes. So you don't want to be, let's see, if you're the end of March, you kind of want to be done by July 1st if you can do it. I'm just looking at my calendar. Sorry. Um, i got to look at the calendar. Um, or I assume you're looking up when the um, tax credit schedule is. Yeah. So it was early this year, and I don't know if it's going to be as early. Probably November. What it was this year, it's usually December uh, for the pre-app. So going backwards, March. April, May, yeah, I would say it would be good if you, 75 days is, is, uh, um, is mid-June. Um, and that gives enough time so they could possibly, they'd at least be starting permitting by the fall. Okay. Once the- so proposals come in, we need some time to evaluate them and, and to select one too, right? Yes. And is that something that's mentioned, I'm sorry, in the RFP, is it say how long a time we have to no. do that? No, no. Sometimes people put it in, but we I resist because then you're on a deadline that you may not you may not be able to fulfill and then you're rushing to choose somebody so mm -hmm. um i but think the everyone wants it done as quickly as possible but the process would be that um i think uh, 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 is it decided that we're the group that's going to review uh, that was my next question too who is there um is it this committee that's reviewing is there uh yes consultant reviewing them or yeah. okay so the charge for the task force included um re reviewing i believe that that was looked up mm -hmm. a few a, a, a while ago that uh you would be reviewing and uh bringing us a recommendation to the board of selectmen um laura you also said that we could add um members now before uh proposals were yeah, I think it's up to whoever appointed you. Is yeah. this in any way governed by the designer selection provisions in uh, chapter, what is it, seven or? Chapter seven, no, it's not because it's, um, you're, you're doing a design build manage, basically a conveyance. Okay. So Maria, we were wondering if you would want to be part of that committee, the evaluation group. It, yeah, I'd be happy to. Yeah, like I said, I've, I've done, uh, Done a handful of these. And that's fine to have the town administrator, right, Laura? Yep. Yeah, you can have whoever the board of selectmen wants. Do we, want, do we want, I mean, there's eight of us, that makes nine. Do we want anybody else who has experience doing this? <laughs> yeah, or, or, you know, I don't know how detailed you expect a proposal to come back, whether, you know, you're You've got engineering that needs to be reviewed or um, 
usually the it's conceptual for the engineering um they won't do their own um uh, they'll do um calculations to see you know what they need for stormwater and those kinds of things but it won't be fully engineered um so there'll be some engineering but um you can always bring staff in if you right, need but not staff. not full not full computations and no. calculations at this point okay no no not at this stage i've done designer re i've done reviews for designer selections and project mm -hmm. manager selections, but not projects per se. Um, Harry, as yes, representing the trust, uh, as well as having experience in this area, uh, you feel comfortable joining the, the review process? Yeah, I, I'd certainly be willing to do it because you know, I've, I've you. done it before. I know what the basic framework is. Okay. and. Back when we went before the select board, there was some discussion about the role that Michael DeVosto played, whether he could be on the task force or whether he could be part of the evaluation committee. And I don't remember whether, whether either of those are true. I think it was a no. No. There's a provision in the conflict of interest statute that limits the board of selectmen to appointing um, some of their own to positions that they supervise. And the only escape hatch is an affirmative vote at annual town meeting. So it's very cumbersome to get the selectmen to serve on a committee that they appoint. So it's probably- Kathleen has her hand up. Okay, thank you. Yeah, um, just a couple of things um, before we get too far down the road. Um, I'm, I'm not nervous about being part of the review committee because I think the detail that we have in our RFP um, gives us the criteria to work with and um, make um, the right decisions. Um, I had a pretty good conversation with Mike Travato before he left the office. Um, and um, the timeline that we've discussed um, is pretty much um, his closing statement to me um, you know, we're looking to get this out, um, hopefully by June or get something back and maybe have something on the table for the select board to look at, um, design concepts and a developer, um, by late September. Um, but this is also something he said, you know what, we're going to be lucky if we attract two developers in this, it's not going to be very complicated. Um, there's not going to be a lot of people that are that are going to step up. So um, I think that um, myself, I'm not going to get too nervous or go down the uh, highway to the future yet on this. We should just take it one step at a time and uh, you know keep our fingers crossed. Carl has his hand up. Yeah, I, I was just going to ask Laura about how much time do you think the developer that we identify would need to put in a pre-app for the um, tax credit cycle? I think they'd build it into their schedule. So I'm more concerned about getting them to permitting, um, giving them enough time to get to permitting so that they're at least in permitting when they put the pre-app in. Um, because otherwise it'll just get, it. it basically won't, give them a placeholder if they're not even at um, permitting yet. So, so are you and the Board of Selectmen okay? You'd wanna have done by the end of August or sooner? Yeah, I think beginning of August. Beginning of August? I think so. Be done because with the evaluation by then or select a developer yeah, by then? It, yeah. Yeah, it, it doesn't take long. You, um, you have a criteria to score. You'll have a score sheet to, you know, to score with, and then there'll be discussions whether you bring the developers in for, for them to present, which I usually like to see, but everyone's different. Um, and, and then, um, you know, you make your choice. It's, it's, um, 
And I do expect there'll be more than two. Um, there's oh, already been, you know, this, there is, um, a, a, I imagine there'll be three or four, actually. Good. Um, do, you, do you know which ones you're thinking would be interested? So most likely POA um, with Housing Assistance Corporation, they usually go in together on the Cape. Um, Penrose, who did East Ham. Um, who else has expressed <coughs> interest? Um, Ted Malone has expressed interest. Um, so that's three. And um, there's a there's a builder slash developer um, in Hyannis who's been trying to get to this Williams building. Um, he may just come in as a contractor. He's doing the Brewster Woods right now, um, but he'd like to be in the ownership side. Um, so he may part partner with someone else. He may partner with somebody, yeah. And who did you say would partner with Hack? Paula. Paula. Yeah. That's preservation of affordable housing. They yep. they purchased a lot of the apartments in Orleans, I believe, right? And one of their national um, staff people comes sailboating in Wellfleet. <laughs> Jan, you had your hand up. Yeah, I wanted to ask Laura, uh, do we usually include field trips? I mean, um, like visit? Yeah. Oh, you mean for us to see what they've done? Yeah. Sometimes, Good idea. sometimes um, you know, it's in the, it's in the RFP that you may do it, you know, that you, you put down that you may have. So um, that takes a little time. I mean, it's not, it's pretty easy to go through the checklist part, but to arrange to go and see some of what they built. Um, can you do that in the month of July to be ready for August? I think, it, I think it just depends on whether we're still doing things virtually or not, you know. And I've, I've used that process to help um, elected officials sort of wrap their heads around, um, you know, a product that a developer delivers with some success. Mm -hmm. Is your hand still up? No question. Oh, sorry. No, I'm good. Um, so um, in terms of that, for... We, there is a place in the RFP to put a date for a site visit, I think, or does that get arranged independently? Laura? Oh, that's, that's inserted in the RFP. Okay. And like, um, so how much, when, what's a good? It's usually three weeks or so after the um, central register. Okay. And if only, say, um, only two of four interested parties want to come present, do we have to have all come present if we want that? They all have to. They all have to. Mm -hmm. so, it's all or nothing. I mean, to me, I would really want somebody to come. I don't know how everybody else feels. Um, but do, is that in the RFP or does that... Well, it, I think the option was, um, it may say may instead of shall. Um, let me find it. Sorry, I think Katie sent it just now because she had it, but um, I'm not sure she sent the correct um, RFP. Mm -hmm. um, she didn't send the one that I had just marked up. So I'll have her redo it and send. Um, I'll get to it. Um, well, I have it right here in front of me. Well, well, we were looking for that. I have a Go question ahead. working backwards uh, from the um, tax credit funding. If that, if that is due in November and December, 
And if we assume that our first attempt won't be successful, which Laura has told us pretty much is the case. I'm sorry? Oh. Um, is our, our goal is to have something in permit process by November so that they can apply this year so that they have a hope of getting yes. it next year? Yes. So yeah. that's really the critical working backwards. Yeah. They, Right. And they usually need between the plans that they present for the proposal and the plans that they need for permitting. It's usually three months. So if you take November, take off three months, that's where I went to October. I mean, where I went to August. Plan for plan review and site design and all those things. Permitting. Well, it'll be a 40B. So it'll just go to the CBA. Are you saying, uh, Laura, that we should have an award made by the middle of August? Yeah. It really doesn't take that long right. to, to make up your mind. Um, so, to score so you're it. talking about CBA, but at, at what point in the timeline are you actually, so you're, you're pushing the whole building permit process off to next step in all of it. Well, the building permit doesn't come till all the funding is in place. So they have to have permitting funding before they can get in. So funding is going to take hopefully no more than two cycles. So you want them in the cycle this year. Um, so the RFP says um, the evaluation committee may choose to visit proposers completed projects. And then it also says the evaluation committee may choose to have proposals present their proposals. Presentations will not be scored. Um, right. right. Um, but it, it, it does, I find that you get a better sense of the architect's vision if you have it presented, because otherwise you look, especially if you're spatially um, uh, handicapped Challenge. like I am, <laughs> challenged <laughs> that um, that's why I like to see the, so they'll give you for the architect, they'll give you elevations, typical floor plan, typical units. And then I always suggest that you put in a, um, a, rend a colored re rendering because if you're spatially challenged, um, the rendering will make it come to life a little bit better. Where is that language in the RFP, Laura? It's in the evaluation criteria. Could we change it if, if, we, if we want to have everybody come? Do we need to change the language? Um, we can change it to, if you want to change it, um, we can change it to the evaluation committee. Um, we'll We'll have presenters. We'll have proposers present their proposals. That's anyway. I can change it to be declarative rather than um, a choice. How do people feel about that? Yeah, I think we want it. I do. Is that a consensus? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah well, I think it's a good idea. Yeah, I'm We're waiting quiet. for Jay to say something here. Hi, Jay. Hi, how you doing? Uh, no, I, I think all the, you know, all these things are, are great. Um, uh, the, uh, the process, we'll, we'll have some control over, I mean, once we start talking to different people, we'll have some control over the way the process works, I'm sure. And Laura, did you say those presentations, uh, they're open to the public? Yeah, the whole process is open to the public. Okay. So when the evaluation committee meets, that's like a posted? Posted meeting. Oh, posted meeting. Yep. Mm -hmm. Posted open meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, the other question uh, we had had was whether the change in the wastewater 
affected either the ground lease or the LDA. Um, and you are looking at your attorney is going to look into that, Laura. Yeah, we I wasn't able. We weren't able to meet this morning. Um, the I can tell you that both the LDA and the um, death land disposition agreement um, and the lease um, uh, have a lot of um, town control over um, what happens and moving throughout the lease term, which is 99 years. Um, that's problematic. Um, and uh, for the recent, based on the recent decisions that the attorney general has made. Um, so uh, I'm going to talk to our general counsel about it and um, and uh, you know it, it just it, there's a level of control that uh, would under the guidance that the attorney general's put forth in a couple of decisions that she's made recently it would tip it to requiring chapter 149 which is public construction and construct and full bids and that would make it infeasible um, financially to do this so um, I'm I'm going to talk to my general our general counsel about it because she and I are working on that issue anyway um, and it's the the sample that the attorneys gave to you is um, same same firm as is representing Brewster, um, but the one they gave you has a whole lot more control in it than the Brewster lease. So I want to see if we can pare it down some. So when you say control, that's negative. Yes. That's negative from a from a um, procurement standpoint. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So if we need a little more time to see the final RFP and make sure those are in place, um, does March, we would, we would need all that but, uh, to send to the select board and whether we wanted to meet again to review it, we would really need that by March 5th before mm -hmm. the, at the latest. Does that feel yeah. doable? That's doable. Okay, do we? It looks like Katie and I are just not on the same page. She's going back and forth with me now, so. <laughs> I'm glad you still have Katie. <laughs> me too. <laughs> um, do we feel like we should meet again um, before sending uh, everything to the select board? Yeah, Elaine, I, I would like to, um, you know, I think we should um, make sure everything's buttoned down if we can get this information all from Laura by the 5th of March, and we can meet um, sometime between um, that time and the select board's meeting on March 9th, I would suggest it. Um, you know, that we have all the information now in front of us, which I thought we were gonna have today, but we don't, so. Mm -hmm. so I'm sorry, so that's our, my fault. <laughs> our agenda deadline is more like the third or fourth of March. Oh, okay. it gets posted. So, so this isn't going to work at all then. Yeah, I mean, we, it gets posted on March fifth. So the the latest that we can have whatever it is that needs to be posted would be sometime on the fourth. Okay. Well. That's just so one. we'll not make the March 9th meeting. Well, why, why wouldn't you make it? Yeah, if we could get it on the 4th, we could meet on the 4th and send it on to the select board. We won't, Laura just said she won't have this um, information for us until maybe the 5th. Well, I said I could have it by the 5th. So by the 5th. Let me look at my schedule and see what I have the first week. And how much, how how much tweaking does it still need, do you think? It's the land lease. We don't want to the, weeks. The, the question is, how much tweaking can we do on the land lease when this is going to go by, 
going to have to pass by your attorneys anyway. So, you know, I don't know. Yeah, and our attorneys are not are not quick to turn things around. No, I know. Laura, is, yeah. the, is both the LDA and the land lease pro forma and are subject to change in negotiation once we make the award? No. no, they didn't. They they didn't put they didn't put them in as I had given you templates and they did their own. They um, meeting. They meeting your attorneys. You're talking about K, KP Law. Yeah. yeah. Have have they seen any? They've seen versions of it thus far. Yeah. They produced one. Okay. Is it possible to have templates in the RFP and then you hammer it out once you have a, a developer? I mean, you know, a simple template that doesn't jeopardize <laughs> anything, that, but that then you hammer it out with the developer when you have the developer on board? Does it usually work that way? Yeah, that usually they, you have a template that has basic terms. Mm -hmm. um, but KP put one in that was more, more like if you were more like a real lease instead of a conveyance and, and, you know, 99 lease, 99 year lease is under the law is conveyance, but this one has, you know, rights of entry. The town has to be a, um, uh, uh, Pay on the insurance and is before. Be so addition, <laughs> additionally insured. Additionally insured. Right, that's um, they have to approve all <clears throat> building plans over and above what the board of selectmen does. So over and above what the zoning board and building and building permit, you know, building um, inspector does for the um, building permit. So. It's a lease, you know, it's like I said, it's more of a lease than a conveyance. And that's where the issues come in with the AJ. Would the board of selectmen be willing to schedule a special meeting in between? Yeah. When's their what meeting is after yeah. the ninth? It would be like the twenty it's every two weeks. It would be oh, okay. uh, the twenty-third of March. Well, I'll do what I can to get it done next week so you have it yeah um, well, we can ask to go on the agenda as a placeholder at least to hopefully yes right. yeah good idea i have some time monday afternoon i can work on it if i can get our my general counsel mm -hmm. some time with her on monday afternoon um because she may say you know it's a it's a template just let it go at this point and it's the next one that matters because it will be the one that's recorded that, you know, that matters. Okay. Okay. I think we just worked through everything that has to be done. Um, you know, we'll send this, we'll have <clears throat> send this to you this afternoon. Okay. Jay? Uh, one thing that uh, we, that can affect this whole process, um, uh, in terms of permitting and things like that is uh, that we don't have that much control. We have no control over is what's going to happen with the zoning board of appeals. Um, I know, you know, sometimes these things can really drag out over. I mean, it, they, they don't, I mean, the board has to make a decision. What is it, Harry, 90 days or something like that? 180 days. Yeah. But you know, it can really drag on and it just can slow things down. We have no control over what some neighbors may or may not do, right. um, those kind of things. And it's a concern, I'm just bringing it up. Oh yeah, yeah. So as long as they have started the permitting process, they're okay for going into the first round. They're not gonna get, you can't get funded until you have a permit, um, but you can go into the round if you're in the, permitting process just to kind of be a stakeholder. And then the next year, hopefully you will have your permit in hand for the next funding round, assuming there aren't any um, real hiccups or appeals. 
by permit, you're talking about building permit or just um, ZBA building. permit, comprehensive permit. You won't have a building permit till you have all right. the. Well, yeah, you can't. I mean, it doesn't make sense for them to start a building permit process. It'll and expire. a building inspector probably wouldn't let them do anything anyway. No. Until they get past, until they get their special permit. Right, and, okay. and it and it would expire before your funding tax credit. Right. The right. special permit? No, the building, Comp building Comp permit, permit if you don't initiate the construction within a certain amount of time. And comp permits are only good for three years. Oh, so three years. Three years. Elaine. It can be renewed, but you know. What what is the status of um, any of the legal issues with the neighbors if there are any? None at the moment. <laughs> okay. We have um, we have a, a, a friendly abutter who had asked us for some you know updated information to share with the butters and to be talking with them and you know it's that really they can't it's when they, the zba takes up the project that they can start yeah. to, but you know ideally it's you know it's a big project it does affect that neighborhood back there but um they they really have you know they can come and listen to the presentations and everything but until the zba takes it up they don't really have any recourse I don't believe. Jan? No, there has to be. Speaking of that. There has um, to be something to appeal. I didn't know if you, you know, where this was with communication with them or whether you anticipated a challenge or for some reason I thought I had seen something where there were some you know, concerns of, from you know, neighbors or folks in that neighborhood. Well, we're always, we are always concerned about that because neighbors are complaining about three, four houses on three acres, you know, so, but hopefully, you know, we can do something. Jan? Well, yeah, yeah, I wanted to tie into um, this discussion with Carl's um, very well done update, which I think is important, a kind of thing to help head off bad feelings from the neighborhood. If they have some transparency, some idea of what is going on and I think his update is a um, good thing to put on the table for that circumstance. Um, and I think Kathleen made a couple of very good suggestions in her email about um, improving what he had written. And I have a couple as well um, because I really don't like the word worrisome yeah. I think that should be challenging. I think that's a much better word. Um, but I think that somewhere we should um, put out some information so people will know what's going on and not be all worried about things. And um, I think Carl's attempt at that is really very good. Uh, well, we'll yeah, I, I think that's a good idea. Just you know, looking at you know, it'd be a little different if it was a redo of an existing complex and, you know, having it be new in that neighborhood or new anywhere. Um, I was just wondering what your, what your outreach to the, the butters or, you know, the neighborhood or folks in that area you know, well, I think has, has been. I think we're very lucky. To, uh, Jeff Sachs is the um, person who lives in that area who asked, and he's he's extremely supportive. And um, I think what Carl did is really excellent. We can incorporate some of these suggestions going forward. Um, we're also um, the Housing Authority is working with the CDP and the Cape Cod Commission to produce a very um, compelling and succinct needs statement too, showing what the need is, you know, in addition to all the great work of documenting, um, you know, what's happened so far. Um, sure. and, I, and I would hope that maybe that could even go, that, that could go on the housing page on the town website. Um, we will use it for uh, an electronic newsletter that the housing authority does. Um, yeah, we'd, 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 we'd be happy to, and, and I just, 
you know, I just ask from, you know, experience watching, mm -hmm. you know, some things that end up as more exciting stories for the um, independent than they need to be. <laughs> no. just, just saying, you know, yeah. if, if, if it's a place that was existing and it was crumbling and it gets done over, everybody's happy about it. Mm -hmm. But but when it's when it's new, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not saying that you haven't done any outreach. I was just curious what what you have done. And, mm -hmm. um, I you know I think because of the pandemic and everybody sort of it, it feels like people are wondering what's going on. You know, I mean they could have come to all our meetings and we have put out information, but you know. Some yeah. people, you just need to send it right to them directly. And that's that's what will be done. Uh, Jeff will use, uh, you know, this excellent document to reach out to the abutters and we can hone it a little bit more for town-wide consumption. Yeah, and, and we'd be happy to put it on the website and yeah, or whatever's that, appropriate from on the town side. That would be great. Elaine, well, I just have, um want to make, um, I have one question, I want to make one point. Um, Maria, from the very beginning, um, this task force and the housing authority in general have been doing um, a great effort on community outreach Good. and um, education with regard to this project um, through the Wellfleet Community Forum um, and uh, you know just all of us getting out there and talking up this project. So we've, we've all been doing due diligence with regard to the community. Yeah, and, and, and I, wasn't, uh, I certainly wasn't doubting that you hadn't. I right. And I know your experience has been with a teardown and a redo. Um, we've yeah, got nothing to tear both. down here yet. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. The other point I want to make is um, to Carl, I've got a question. Um, this excellent um, informational, you know, um, letter or um, I don't know what we're calling it, bulletin. Um, am I to understand that that's going to go out through the um, um, Wellfleet community um, non-resident taxpayers um, uh, newsletter? How are we there, getting it out there? There, there is an, an article in the newsletter that came out, I think it's yesterday or the day before. Okay. Um, which has some of the same text in it. It's not as long. It's briefer. Um, I think the idea for this document was really to do something more proactive, specifically targeted at the abutters, trying to engage them in a conversation earlier to hit things off, um, rather than allow people to get anxious about it, which, you know, I think it is uh, obviously an anxiety producing uh, situation for abutters. And um, uh, so it, it's, I think it's sort of a different kind of outreach than the forum. I think it's more uh, with a small group of abutters and specifically reaching out to them. I was wondering whether there's any, are, are we, if we're involved in the decision review process, um, are we compromised in any way in terms of engaging in those kind of conversations with um, abutters before the decision's made? before the recommendations made? I don't think so. I mean, some sort of conflict of interest, Carl? Um, yeah, uh, I don't, um, um, it's, it's uh, I, I'm, there's not something specific I have in mind. It's just a question of whether um, we can engage in that kind of activity. In other words, reaching out and trying to talk to them about what's being proposed and explain things to them. There's, there's nothing prohibiting you from doing that. Okay. It's a, it's a good idea. Yeah, I think the only thing we have to be careful of is uh, saying something will happen that might not necessarily happen. Like, oh yeah, you don't want all those trees cut down? Sure, we won't cut down all those trees, you have to say. No, I mean, sometimes it's more of a timeline thing. You know, when time, when time has gone by and they haven't seen anything um, come up and meetings or forums, you know, it's is it's really just, you know, let them know what the what the timeline is and, and where right. you are. Right. You know, that way they don't feel like they missed something and they need to catch up or get defensive or weird about it. Yep. Just making sure that they know how to get the information and the outreach and maybe see the renderings and 
mm -hmm. um, hear the conversation, just so they feel like they're um, that they haven't missed something that they need to react quickly to. Right. Yeah, and I think this is perfect time to do it. And I really thank Carl for put, putting together that excellent summary as. Yes. And uh, yeah, nice work, Carl. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we're very fortunate. But I'd love to read it myself if that would be helpful. I, I did attach it to the email I sent out to everybody, including you, uh, this morning. Um, okay. It has the um, that and the agenda, but it has that as okay. I think it just says Lawrence Road Info. I had to keep changing the name because I also okay. have document yeah. on my computer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but if you can't find it, let me know. And, and yeah, I'll I'm it. sure I can. Thank you. Um, would we want to schedule a short meeting for next week um, in case we can, you know, sign off on things? Um, and get them to the select board. Yeah, time. I'm good with that. Well, as late as uh, on the fourth. The fourth is the day that this would have to be into the uh, town administrator's office to be on the agenda. By What's what? the third look like? Well, I just, you know, I want to give as much time as possible, but about the third. The third at late in the day? Yeah. yeah. Laura, I think the question is whether Laura will be able to get us the materials by then. She thought she would um, be able to uh, button this down on Monday, which would make it March 1st. Well, we Monday's March the 1st. Laura, is that reasonable? The no, third, she's still on. The third is, is great. If that's she's she's muted. Right. Yeah, I did it. Um, right now, it looks okay. okay. Um, for Monday, I can, you know, I can, I have time late afternoon on Monday to finish this. Um, so, Elaine, just ignore the email you got from Katie. Okay. I have to just make some adjustments. Um, so, so, if we met Wednesday morning or Wednesday or sometime, or, or no, in time to still pass the info on. I mean, do we feel comfortable passing the info on before we've met? I, I, no. I think we want to meet and then, yeah. you know, so if it may be earlier on Wednesday would be good so that potentially they could have it by the end of the day on Wednesday. On the business it's day on Wednesday, PM. yeah. Or like a 1 p.m. on Wednesday or? Perfect. Maria, you can put it on the, you can put a, a placeholder on the agenda for this. And by when do you need to have the materials? By the 3rd. The 9th. March 4th. Uh, the 3rd or the 4th. We put the agenda together on Wednesdays now. So would you say by noon on the 4th would be sufficient? No later than noon on the 4th. Okay. But um, as far as everybody's concerned, could we meet at 1 p.m. on Wednesday the 3rd? Yes. Yeah. I can't. Okay. I can't be there, Elaine, but. Well, you, will, you will have put in your effort okay. <laughs> by then. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And, you know, I just want to make sure you feel, I mean, you know, this wouldn't have happened without all Laura's work. And I really trust her. And I, I, I feel it's awkward that stuff that comes out of town council can affect things in a negative way and that Laura's being so careful to try to find those things and make sure that doesn't happen. So. Yeah, it's probably not on their radar screen, mm -hmm. honestly, because, yeah. you know, you have to follow decisions that have been made and whatever. It's just that I do this all the time. They don't do this all the time. Yeah, right. Laura, exactly. Would a little later on Wednesday be any different for you? Yeah, since no. we have until noon on the 4th. No, I'm booked from 1 o'clock to 5. Okay. So, all right. Who specifically have you been dealing with at KP Vault? I don't know who did this. Oh. I know Sharon is, Sharon is usually the one that, I don't know who works with Wellfleet. Sharon did Brewster's. Well, it's usually Katie Klein, Maria. 
Yeah, let me. Usually, know. Katie Klein. Yeah, no, that that's great. Kate, Katie's great. I, I just say that because Carolyn Murray is has stepped back a, a little bit temporarily. Um, if she was the one you were dealing with, so yeah. but if it, it's Katie, that's great. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's who it was. Okay, well that's wonderful. Till next week, huh? <laughs> and then. So the select board anticipates, or do, are they not aware that this is, that you're looking to be on their agenda? I mean, I will let Michael DeVasto know, he, Rebecca and I set the agenda. Yeah. Do you want, I can send an email to Rebecca and Michael asking to put us on the agenda, or do you wanna? Um, you, uh, you can, and just copy me. Okay. You know, just so he knows it's coming, because the, mm -hmm. the list for, the list for that agenda is looking about midnight right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Before this is on there. Just the what? Just say. I said the, the agenda is looking at, at about midnight right now. Yeah. For okay. that meeting. Just okay. Just so you're aware. All right. <clears throat> well, this is great. This is great news. Yeah. 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 You know, it's it's one of uh, half a dozen projects that you know I've seen get rolled to the top of the hill um, lately and glad to see it pushed over the edge and uh, you know, maybe even see a shovel get put in the ground. So. Yeah, I mean, I want to compliment. It's exciting. I want to compliment everybody throughout the pandemic. This has been a pr pandemic project that we really haven't let drop aside from what, what the pandemic caused and, you know, the grant that Jim and Mike got and the grant we got from the county, everything has been, you know, uh, forward looking. Yeah. So. I, I want to add to that, Elaine, in that in um, in um, Carl's um, bulletin, if you will, I don't know what to call it. Um, if you add up the dollar amount um, from the feasibility study to a consult to wastewater, um, if you add up the dollar amount so far, um, none of it's been spent by the town. And um, that's a very um, you know, significant positive um, that we've been able to do this so far with grants funded by the state um, and none of it's been on our dime because often the, uh, the uh, call in Wellfleet when you talk about affordable housing um, here has been in the past 20 years and who's gonna pay for it? Who's gonna pay for it? We heard that many times with pro housing projects. In this case, the town has not spent a dime. I, I think that's remarkable. Um, and it's all enumerated in Carl's bulletin. Well, Laura, while we yeah. still have you, mm -hmm. I just wanna ask, um, could you and Katie put in dates in the RFP, assuming that it'll get approved on March 9th, but then we would adjust them if anything mm -hmm. changes? Sure. Okay, that would be great. Does this complex yeah. have a have a name or we're just we're going to call it 95 on so i I'm i think sorry, what, what the proposal if it if the project has a name i think you do 95 lawrence until a developer comes on board and then they name it yeah we've Usually been what happens. 95 lawrence rental homes <laughs> yeah. okay all right it, it'll probably be lawrence green or something like that That's yeah <laughs> yep lawrence lawrence court well, we yeah. were actually starting to wonder who Lawrence is. The La Lawrence of Lawrence. <laughs> yeah. That's where the land of the school came from. That's I'm what. Lawrence. They, they they were the uh, they owned all the property there, Elaine. Yeah. That's where the land of the elementary school came from. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. I just want to add, just because you know, part of my duty is to add that um, every my time. That I, that I put in and, and Katie's time has all um, been uh, free of charge to the right. to the town as always from yeah. NHP. That's and we a, had grants as well to you, so. So add another half million dollars. Yeah. <laughs> it's impressive, it is, it's really impressive. Yeah, well, thank you all. It was so great all you right. could join us, Maria. Thank you, Laura, for all yeah. your time. Thank you, everybody. Maria, nice to meet you. Yeah, you too. too. Take care, everyone. Stay healthy. Thanks. Bye-bye.